everyone. So my name is Tamara, and I'm going to talk about making effective APIs. So uh, I, I have uh, I have been inspired by Scott Myers, who once said that we should make interfaces easy to use correctly and hard to use incorrectly. And although I agree with that and the implications, I must admit that I failed Scott Myers. So, so you don't have to do also, so you don't have to fail Scott Myers. Let me show you five tips to improve your APIs. So the first one is about naming. So the example that I have here is a very dumb example because this is a five minute talk, is, uh, is an example of a print data function that takes a value and prints a formatted distance. Uh, the user might use that correctly, but might use that incorrectly as well because they might, do a, they might have assumptions about the use of the API. So how can we make that better with better names? We can give the function, we can give the, the parameters better names. And this is already something that will help the, 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 use, the correct use of your API. So naming is complex, it's hard. So I suggest you to check this talk from Kate Gregory on Name is Hard, where she covers uh, in more details the best practice. But I'm betting that if I go back to the example, you are like, okay, we can even make that better. And yes, so let's continue on that example on the second tip, which is to use strong types. So the strong types uh, makes your user, the user of this API, to explicitly create an object, to create uh, a representation of that um, of that type. So by using in this example, the name it type library, we can specifically, specifically say that we want the meter uh, distance to be passed. So the user will need to, to associate that. And by creating with, uh, by calling with some other values, it won't compile the best type of error that we can have, right? So we can even get fancier here and improve the APIs. I have mentioned the name it type, but there are a lot of other APIs or a lot of other libraries out there that you can check that out. Uh, and I have linked this uh, blog post here uh, for you to understand more and even build your own. So going on to the next, uh, the next tip is to avoid easily swapped parameters. And to illustrate that, I have a simple visitor pattern here on a graph that can walk and walk, it receives a visitor. Uh, and then we start to, to implement or to, in, um, to improve this API by, for example, allowing the user to select if they want to go backwards or forward to ignore something, ignore something else. And as the API grows, it becomes very easy to swap all of these booleans or whatever type it is. So how can we make that better? You might say, oh, we can add comments, but let's be honest, it will not hold the new one here. So let's rewrite this. So the first thing that I would do in this case is to create an own class for the direction. This way the user can specifically say what's the direction. Then I would possibly create a configuration class or some kind of aggregation that will hold uh, this information and then the user can uh, use as they want. This will not stop the misuse of the, the easy swap parameters, but will help. And if you want to check your code base, uh, you can use this rule from Clink Tidy. So the fourth tip is to take careful thinking about your intent. What do you want to do with your code? It's very easy when we are creating a class or something at that level to just put setters and getters everywhere. In this case, uh, I have this representation of a DB object and I have the setters because I want to build this object in multiple steps and then return to the user. And it's all fine, right? It's okay, I'm gonna use those APIs. But because the APIs are there, they are available, the user might also expect to, uh, might also want to use that with uh, other expectations. And for example, expect that this object will update the DB and will not. This is a very simple example when the solution for this one would be, for example, to carry the, the the initialization to the constructor. This way, the user will not have access to the to the to the objects. The last tip is to check more content. Uh, I suggest you to check the back to based class from yesterday. And that was it. Thank you. And let's make Scott Myers proud.